the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be Welcome to the Lord's Challenge with Joshua Daniel. The Layman's Evangelical Fellowship International is a ministry reaching people from all walks of life since 1935. After a life-changing encounter with Jesus Christ at the age of 16, Joshua Daniel has been declaring the marvelous deliverance from sin, which is freely given to all those who turn to the loving Savior. Wherever this message has gone out, Broken relationships have been restored, sickness healed, ill-gotten money returned, and thieves turned into givers. We now invite you to watch and receive the invaluable blessing that God has for you. If you would please turn to Deuteronomy chapter 10. There was a Jewish colonel waiting in his way wheelchair for one of the tests in the heart clinic in Cleveland. And I fell into conversation with him. And I can't now say whether I quoted something of Deuteronomy to him, but he said, that is the book I love. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So there is something which God requires of us. You know, very often we live as though there is nothing which we owe at all to God. But my dear friends, if you spend just 60 minutes here, do you know that there is a pump which pumps 500 and 60 gallons. And that pump is within you. Your heart is pumping one and a half gallons every minute. How amazing. And yet we feel we owe nothing to God. He's just a name, he's just a decoration, he's just an object of Sunday's worship. You know, a nominal kind of worship. What does the Lord require of you? but to fear the Lord your God. How would we say that we fear the Lord our God? We fear the red lamb, don't you? When the amber and you're trying to beat the lights, and get through before it turns amber or red. And suddenly it turns red. Boy, you know, if there's a policeman around, you'll get a ticket. And you don't want a ticket. So, Unconsciously, we say, 
that there are certain laws that we obey consciously. Just a part of us. Automatically, you break and you stop. Nobody needs to tell you that. You know, the commandments of God appear to be so cheap to people today. Thou shalt not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Greed and covetousness. You can't say where it is going to land you. You know, the fights that begin over boundaries, the murders that take place over a few yards or a few square feet. I sometimes tell people, hey, your fences seem to have got feet. They walk in the night. They move up. You know, folks, but one of the things that uh, amazes people when they come to this land is, you know, your neighbor's lawn stops there. There's hardly any marker. And then he moves his part. There is an unseen line there. He respects that line. That's a Christian heritage. It's not to be found everywhere where the word of God is not known. Thou shalt not covet anything that belongeth to your neighbor. A man said, you know, I said, how are things in Saudi Arabia? I asked a man. He said, oh my. Oh, one has got to be very careful in Saudi Arabia, he said. A friend of mine was walking along and a big car stopped and out came one of the sultans or one of the Saudi princes and said, I want your wife. And this man said, well, you know, let's not talk about it here. Come to our room in the hotel or wherever. He went over, packed up his things, and left immediately. And the Bible says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. But you know how it is, as one woman said to me, Mr. Daniel, please keep on preaching against divorce. Because a man in the church, he ran after me. And somehow, got me. And so my sons who are now grown up will not even speak to me. So there is the word of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. So friends, if you will please turn to 2 Samuel and the 22nd chapter. 
You know, power is one of those things which comes from God. And you know how someone defied, defined politics as seeking to possess power. And he said, politics is all about power. You know, power is a very dangerous thing. You can misuse it. You can harm a lot of people. You can do good to a lot of people. So, in the 22nd chapter of 2nd Samuel, and the 33rd verse. God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. Power. You know, you, you feel money brings power. So, the power which is in money you buy up a lot of land or you buy up a lot of a neighboring country's wealth, what happens? You begin to dictate to that country. Why? You have got power over their money. As a matter of fact, it's one of the most foolish things that any country can do, which is to plunge into debt and become indebted to any other country. And today, when we know that the balance of payments between America and China are heavily weighted on the China, Chinese side. Then what does it mean? The borrower is servant to the lender. That's what the Bible says. The borrower is servant to the lender. So, the man who lends you money feels he has got you by the throat. And the same thing happens when you go to the devil. And you look to the devil for the future, to the palmist, to the astrologers, to the prognosticators. What happens? The devil has power upon you. He says, this man comes to me for direction. He wants to know, and I am the one to tell him his future. So I have power up upon him. Now here the Bible says that he makes my way perfect. God is my strength and power. Now David proved God in all the circumstances of life, beginning as a shepherd boy, he had to do his shepherd's duty. When a lion came and when a bear took hold of one of his sheep, he had to rescue the lamb from the lion's jaws. I don't think it is an easy undertaking. Whether you would want to do that, I don't know. 
But David said, He would not let the lion have one of his sheep. So, then when he went on to be in the king's court, and the king began to hunt David, seeking to kill him, well, David had to face a new situation. Here was the king and his army chasing him. Was God going to be sufficient for him at that time? Where could he run? But he proved God. God is my strength and power. Then came his own son, who began to pursue David. And David had to run away from his throne and, and capital city of Jerusalem. Now, when his own son was pursuing him, Now did David sit back and say, hey, now this is a tragedy which I can't face. No. He overcame even at that time and he wept for his son. He pleaded with his generals, spare Absalom, spare my son. Now, so David, when he speaks about power which comes from God, he was speaking about situations which you and I are never likely to face. More stressful, a thousand times more stressful than anything which we have faced. And he says, he makes, makes my way perfect. So, you know, this business of saying to people all the time and feeling I'm terribly stressed, stressed, overstressed. That's the word. You know, you collapse into the chair saying, I'm stressed. All right. There are the battles of life. There are the situations which are stressful. There are hard, the hard times. What we like is the easy time. We like a smooth flight. But you know, it's not always that you have a smooth flight. I, I was flying somewhere across the Atlantic or here in the U.S., and my mother was seated next to me. And suddenly we hit an air pocket and the plane dropped so fast that, of course, you know what happens to the trays and stuff. And my mother said, are we falling? I said, oh, no, mother, <laughs> it'll be all right. <laughs> but you see, this... That was a stressful moment for everybody. You know, there are some flyers who don't like to fly at all. Or at least there are some people who don't like to fly at all. As a matter of fact, some flyers who faced many crashes don't like to get into a plane again. And so, all these situations are there. But... In the midst of it all, to be able to say, my strength I get from God. He is my power. And he is, he is the one who makes my way perfect. Well, you know, even the GPS <laughs> leads you... <laughs> leads you in the wrong direction, as one driver found himself 
phoning us. Well, I'm headed towards uh, this road, towards Ann Arbor, am I right? No, no, no. You have to come in the opposite direction. We had to tell him, uh, tell her, you know? But we have something greater than GPS. Isn't that wonderful? And then the following verse says, 34th verse, He maketh my feet like hind's feet. He setteth me upon my high places. You know, folks, when you have to walk through a field, you have to watch for the pits. You don't want to sprain an ankle or have a needless fall. But when you see these animals like the deer run, they don't seem to care at all. And when you see the goats on the mountain rocks, where is the foothold? He makes my feet like hinds' feet. So, the Lord will help you. Let us pray. Let us tell God, Lord, I don't want to be a lame man. I don't want to give all my thought, all my soul, to my difficulties and problems. I want to love you with all my soul. Please, Lord, help me. Gracious Father, we need feet for our love. Otherwise, our love will become an invalid. Just stuck to the couch. We need feet for our love. We don't want laziness in our purpose or slowness in our decisiveness. We want to obey your word. Here we are, Lord Jesus. While all around us there is so much stress and sorrow, and people are facing difficulties of so many sorts, and little children don't know what to make of it, and people imagine, when will this nightmare pass? At such a time, Lord Jesus, we cry to you. Help us to show a Savior who is sufficient, who makes our feet like hinds' feet. Hear our prayer. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. And pastures feed us for our use, thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast taught us thy need. Blessed Jesus. Thy we are. We.
This program is brought to you by the Layman's Evangelical Fellowship International, an interdenominational missionary and prayer group working for revival around the globe. We invite every layperson to become God's ally in changing his or her corner of the world. Please write, and if you have a prayer request or concern you would like to share, please do let us know. You can email us at post at lefi.org or visit our website at lefi.org. Our mailing address is lefi P.O. Box 1072, Armadale, W.A. 6992. Until we meet again next week, may God bless you.